Hi, my name is Emily Perry and I'm a scientist. I work at a place called Embel EBI, which stands for European Molecular Biology Laboratory, European Bioinformatics Institute. That first bit, the Embel part, shows we are part of a large organisation with lots of different centres in different countries. The second part, EBI, is specific to where I work. So let's take a minute to unpick what that means. Firstly, we're European, which means we're an international organisation. We get funding from all over Europe and we have people working here from all over the world. There are huge amounts of international collaborations in science. Secondly, we're the Bioinformatics Institute. What do you think that bioinformatics means? Can you break the word up into parts? Teachers, you may wish to pause the video for a moment to discuss. Bioinformatics means we study biology, that's the bio part, using computers, that's the informatics part. Bioinformatics is a great way to do scientific research without working in a lab. Lab work requires a lot of specialist equipment and reagents. For bioinformatics you just need a computer with access to the internet. Sometimes we do bioinformatics to help with lab work. We can use public databases to decide what to experiment on and then we do the experiments in the lab and analyse the results with a computer. However, some researchers work only on bioinformatics, creating tools and databases and analysing data. To do this kind of work, you have to understand the science behind what you're studying, but also have the computational skills, like coding, to do the analysis. What benefits can you think of for using computers to research living things rather than relying on lab experiments? Teachers, maybe pause for a moment to discuss. Things you might have discussed could include flexibility of when and where you can work, reducing animal testing, reducing costs of research, saving time and being able to process and analyse huge amounts of data, what we call big data. You might have come up with your own ideas too. Today's practical is something that real scientists would do. We're going to investigate a gene to find it in new species. Researchers might do this to help them design experiments to do in the lab, or they might have identified a gene from experiments and want to know more about it. Before we get stuck into the science, I'm going to tell you a little about me how I ended up in the job I do, and what working for a large science organisation is like. I went to an ordinary, comprehensive school in Lancashire. I did sciences for GCSE and A-level, but I also did a bit of drama. Then I went to the University of Edinburgh, where I studied genetics. Then I stayed on and did a PhD. A PhD is another degree that you do after your undergraduate degree. During a PhD, you work on a long-term research project. Mine took three years, then write a thesis at the end. For science PhDs, you often do these in a lab. It turns out that I'm terrible at lab work. I am clumsy and I am impatient, which are not good in a lab. But I did a lot of science communication stuff alongside it, which got me a job doing science communication in schools. These communication skills got me a job at Embel EBI doing outreach, which means I teach and train scientists how to use the online resource called Ensemble that you're going to be working with today. I now manage a team doing this, which means my job title is Ensemble Outreach Project Leader. My job is really cool because I get to work with new and exciting scientific data, so I'm always learning new science and finding out about the research that's going on. I also get to travel to research institutes around the world to teach courses, so I'm always meeting new people and learning about the science they do, but also about their cultures. Although I work in bioinformatics, I didn't study it. When I was studying, bioinformatics was quite a new subject, so you couldn't really study it at university, and a lot of the, a lot of the skills I need I picked up on the job. This has changed a lot. And now you can study bioinformatics at undergraduate level or masters. There are even apprenticeship type programs. Part of my job involves working with new research projects like Darwin Tree of Life. 
Darwin Tree of Life aims to sequence genomes, that's full DNA codes, for every species in the British Isles. We wanted to use this project to let you know about what's happening with the Darwin Tree of Life and how the data it produces helps us to understand evolution and the different types of species in the British Isles. We also wanted you to see a different side to scientific research using computers and if any of you are keen on computing and science, give you a glimpse of a potential career you might want to go into. All species on Earth came about through evolution. We all descended from a common ancestor, with different organisms adapting to different environments and lifestyles. We can see this when we look at the morphology of different species, comparing the shapes of their bodies and how they use them. Here we can see vertebrate limbs, and how they all evolved from the same bones. But these bones differ in shape and size to allow them to function in different ways, such as hooves, fins, or arms. Can you see which bones are the same and how they've changed? Teachers, let's pause the video and take a look. Morphology is how scientists have studied evolution for hundreds of years. It was how Charles Darwin came up with his theory of evolution by natural selection. But in the last few decades, scientists have found a new tool for looking at how species evolve. We can see evolution when we look at the DNA in different species and how the sequences of genes change. This is where bioinformatics come in. A gene is a sequence of DNA in an organism's genome. The precise order of bases A, T, G and C determine the precise order of amino acids in the protein it codes for. The amino acids allow the protein to fold into its correct shape and carry out its function. During evolution, the sequence of a gene and its protein change. Genes which started out the same and diverged or changed over time between species are called orthologs. For example, the gene I worked on during my PhD is called NIPBL and is involved in holding replicated DNA together until it separates at mitosis. It does this in the human cells I was working with, but a lot of what we know about this gene comes from studying the ortholog nipped B in fruit fly. The sequence of the gene is similar, but not identical between human and fruit fly, and it does the same job. What uses can you think of for studying orthologs? We can pause the video here to have a discussion. We can identify functions of genes by finding their orthologs in other species. We can study changes over evolutionary time. We can find functional regions of protein. Darwin Tree of Life aims to sequence the genome of every eukaryotic species in the British Isles and the surrounding seas. We can find the genes in these genomes by sampling the RNA. When genes are expressed, the DNA is copied or transcribed to make signal molecules called RNA. We can sequence the RNA, then use sequence matching to map these sequences onto the genome. This tells us where on the genome the genes are. This can all be done using specially designed computer software. Once we've found the genes, we then have to work out their function, and this is much harder. Extensive work by biologists is needed to carry out experiments to see what a gene does. This can involve seeing what happens when the gene is mutated, visualising where the protein is expressed, and finding what other things in the cell the protein interacts with, and much more. This is very time consuming. However, a lot of work has already been done. We know the function of most human protein coding genes, partly by studying them directly, and partly by studying them in orthologs or the equivalent genes in model organisms, such as mouse, yeast and fly. This is down to thousands of scientists working on this over many decades. Orthologs usually do the same job in different species. Both the human gene I worked on, NIPBL, and its ortholog NIPTB in fruit fly are involved in holding DNA together after it rec replicates. So if we can find the orthologs of newly identified genes, we can find what they do. In this way, we can use bioinformatics to drastically reduce the amount of experiments we need to do. 
For example, I was working on NIPBL in human because someone found that it was linked to a genetic disease. Because we already knew that in the fly, NIPB was involved in holding the DNA in place, I could focus my work on looking at where the DNA was held in cells with this genetic disease. Finding orthologs involves matching sequences. One algorithm, that is a computer process or program, that can be used to match sequences is called BLAST, which stands for Basic Local Alignment Search Tool. BLAST takes a short sequence and tries to find where in a longer sequence such as a genome or set of sequences such as all the genes in the genome, it matches. BLAST assigns scores to matches it can find and gives the highest score to long matches with little to no gaps. You can run BLAST with either protein or DNA sequences. Now let's try a practical with this BLAST tool. Today, you'll be using this same website that researchers use and it is open to anyone to use wherever they are in the world. Ensemble is a website and database where researchers can find information about genes, genomes and proteins. Well-studied genomes such as human can be found at Ensemble.org. There's loads of extra information on the genes like what they do, what effects changes in the genes have and where in the body the genes are expressed. Species which are not so well studied, such as the genomes being sequenced as part of Darwin Tree of Life and are very new, are being put out speedily with minimal extra information on rapid.ensemble.org. In this practical, you're going to find a human gene and export its protein sequence. Then you're going to use BLAST to find the same gene in some of the Darwin Tree of Life species. Pause the video here and refer to your worksheet for instructions on this practical. The sequence of genes and proteins change incrementally over time, which is what evolution is. Lots of these changes put together cause the major differences we see between species. By comparing related species, we can work out when changes occurred in evolutionary history. This can help us to categorise newly identified species. We can also work out when species diverged and why. We do this by aligning sequences together. One algorithm that does this is called Clustal. Clustal uses similar scoring methods to BLAST, but it can group together lots of sequences and say which ones are the most similar to each other. Now let's use Clustal in another practical. We can use the sequences of the human, sea otter, black swan and Atlantic cod genes that we found in the last practical in the next one. We need to export these from Ensemble. We will use Cluster Omega to align these sequences together. Cluster will group sequences based on similarity and also allow us to see regions that are common to all the proteins. Pause this video and refer to your worksheet for instructions. In this activity, we've used a real database that scientists use in their research. As you saw, all the data is publicly available and can be accessed by anyone with, an, with a computer and an internet connection, including you. This is called Open Data and is a cornerstone of bioinformatics research. We used this database to find a gene in human that had already been studied. We used the sequence of the human gene to find the same one in other species, which we know a lot less about. We looked at how these genes are different to each other and why they are different. This is the sort of analysis that scientists might do before starting to run experiments. This allows scientists to find out as much as they can about a gene in just a few minutes. 
As a result, scientists may be able to develop cures for disease or contribute to conservation efforts. If this activity has sparked your interest, you could try investigating other genes. You'll find lists of human genes on places like Wikipedia that you could search for. You could also try finding the same genes in other species that we didn't look at in these practicals. You may be the first person in the world to explore these genes. Remember, you don't need to work in a lab to be a scientist. Bioinformatics is a rapidly growing area of biology and will be vital in solving some of the world's biggest challenges, from adapting to climate change, to finding alternatives to oil-based products, cons to conserving our most valuable and endangered species. If you want to know more about a, a career using computers in biology, go to yourgenome.org or search for a bioinformatics degree at university.